Doom Eternal is coming to Xbox Game Pass, Resident Evil 8 adds gameplay changes and No Man's Sky adds its biggest update yet. Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of Top Gaming News. Hope you guys are doing well. My name is Game Manus and let's just jump into some exciting news of this week. Last week, Microsoft bought ZeniMax Media for $7.5 billion. ZeniMax owns several industry-leading game developers such as Bethesda Softworks, the makers of Fallout and Elder Scrolls, and it also owns ID Software, who are the makers of Doom and Wolfenstein franchises. Now with all of this, speculation ran around that there will be more new games coming from Bethesda's side. Maybe there will be a new Fallout Vegas 2 coming to PC. Well, it's too early to say whether they will be making a new Fallout game which is coming to Xbox Game Pass, which in my opinion is actually the best thing that you can buy right now because there's so many games that you can play, including Microsoft Flight Simulator which came out on day one to Xbox Game Pass. And it might be possible that some of the Bethesda games are coming to Xbox Game Pass. But there's one game that is definitely confirmed is coming to Xbox Game Pass, that is Doom Eternal. Microsoft just announced that Doom Eternal is coming on Xbox Game Pass on October 1st, that is this Thursday. The unfortunate thing is, it's not coming to PC as of yet. So the PC owners will have to wait later this year to get that game on Xbox Game Pass. It's kind of a bummer that Doom Eternal is not coming to PC in the same date as it's coming for the Xbox consoles. But we have to be patient because Microsoft just bought ZeniMax. It's not like they're gonna throw all the games into Xbox Game Pass. There's definitely some game plan there. But the good thing is that Phil Spencer has already talked about that Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield will be coming to Xbox Game Pass on day one, just like Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's wonderful to see that Xbox just bought ZeniMax Studios and now games from ID Software and Bethesda might be coming to Xbox Game Pass, which is the best subscription to buy to play a variety of games. And if you want to join Xbox Game Pass for the very first time, you can buy the subscription for only 50 rupees. That's super cheap. Last week we also had Tokyo Game Show and in that we got to see more info about Resident Evil 8. Resident Evil 8 Village is set off in this unknown location of a village and they talked about how the visual looks different in the game as compared to Resident Evil 7 and things like that but moreover how this game will be more focused on Ethan Winters, the protagonist on this game. Ethan Winters was already a protagonist in the previous Resident Evil 7 game, which was a very different game when we take a look into Resident Evil franchise. Resident Evil 7 introduced us to a first person survival horror game which we didn't see that much in Resident Evil 5 and 6 which was a complete action packed game. This one was much more towards the horror side of things. Resident Evil 7 was not just a game of killing monsters and zombies but it's also about horror and puzzles and the director Morimasa Sato has also told that Resident Evil 8 will be adding more horror but moreover there will be more freedom added to the players so that they can move around and find things of their own. Resident Evil 7 didn't allow that freedom to move anywhere you want which will be allowed in Resident Evil 8 because we are in this location which is too huge that you can wander around anywhere you want, probably solve some side puzzles, get some hints, maybe get some easter eggs, who knows. One of the things that they kept on talking about was the visual aspects of things and to be honest the visuals look so much different than that of Resident Evil 7. And they have made the models so much more realistic and the surroundings near the village actually looks a lot more creepier especially at night time. So it's really interesting to see how they're gonna add that horror element outside the village like outside the cottage whatever it is. It will be really really interesting to see and I'm so much excited for that. Resident Evil 8 is a direct sequel to Resident Evil 7 where Ethan Winters and her wife Mia went through so much trouble but that doesn't stop yet because we also have Chris Redfield who is possibly an antagonist in this game because in the trailer he killed Ethan's wife so I don't see him as not an antagonist you know. Why? As of right now there is no release date for the game but it will be coming out sometime in 2021 and will be available for Xbox Series X, PS5 and PC and they will also be looking into releasing this game on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Which I don't know if there will be but maybe later down in the line, who knows. What do you guys think about Resident Evil 8 Village? Are you guys excited? I am very much excited to see how the story of Ethan Winters will go. I think it's probably going to be better than Resident Evil 7. Just as I thought that Call of Duty will not release any more seasons in Modern Warfare, here comes season 6 for Modern Warfare and this time they have big changes in the map of Warzone. They are adding Verdansk subway system. So basically adding more trains which we already had in the surface but now we're gonna have more of that underground. 
Infinity Ward has confirmed that it is a functioning transportation system which will take you players throughout the map as long as they are inside the safe zone. Trains will regularly stop at stations as they go clockwise and anti-clockwise and you will have time to loot around those stations. Now something very interesting that they have added is that the train won't move at all if there is fighting going on. So the train will just stop and once the fighting is over, then the train will move. So Infinity Ward says that this location is the one true safe area, which I'm not so sure if it is. Season 6 will be releasing tomorrow and they are also adding two more new operators finally in the game. They are Farah and Nikolai. Now these characters are from the single player campaign, as I said they should have added that previously and they're adding it now which doesn't make sense but at least they're here but the good thing about this game is how they're going after Zakaev that is the antagonist in the first classic modern warfare game which is where this game is heading towards so I guess by the end of all of this maybe in modern warfare 2 the reboot they will be going after Zakaev all the way like he will be the main target I mean right now he's also the main target but they're going towards Zakaev at that point they will be like very close to Zakaev you know and I think they will have a different story but it's really interesting to see how they have added Zakaev into this multiplayer season thing. And speaking of the next game, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War will be getting a beta for all platforms. The PS4 beta will start from October 8th for those who have pre-ordered the game and the open beta for PlayStation 4 will also happen from October 10th to 12th. The next weekend beginning from October 15th, PC players will be getting the beta those who have pre-ordered the game and the open beta will run through October 17th to 19th. This will allow you to know how Black Ops Cold War actually plays and the last time I played Black Ops Cold War in PlayStation 4, to be honest, it played really well. It was much more boots to the ground kind of gameplay of how Call of Duty usually was and it is more drop down than Modern Warfare, the new one and to be honest, I think you will like it when you start playing the game. Maybe some things that you won't like will be gun sounds, maybe some animations here and there but overall the game is pretty good. One of the games that has changed its own landscape is No Man's Sky and very recently with their big update of No Man's Sky Origins, it seems like the game has more variety than ever. The game is adding more flora and fauna and a lot of different plants. They added so many more animals which looks really awesome and they added this giant worm which is so giant it looks awesome and scary at the same time. They have also added changes to the weather system of the game. Instead of having one weather system in the entire planet, for example, toxic storms in the entire planet, so you have to leave the planet to get away with it. Instead of that, you will have storms or tornadoes, which will be traveling from one location of the planet to the other, instead of having it throughout the planet, which I think is a more realistic approach. In the trailer, we also saw these robots wandering around and some alien buildings that will be storing some data, treasures and direction to long forgotten ruins. All of that looks so much more amazing and there is one more thing that is added that is volcanoes. But don't worry, you won't get burned or your house won't get burned down because it won't be in your home planet. Sean Murray, the founder of Hello Games, told that he wanted to add more planets that adds variety and not change anything to the existing planets. But there will be addition of animals and plants in those planets as well. No Man's Sky has just upped their game by adding more variety, more reasons to explore, more things that you can do in the game which was not there 4 years ago. And this update is free for everyone so if you own No Man's Sky you will get this free update but don't worry if you don't own No Man's Sky you can always play the game using Xbox Game Pass. Another reason to buy Xbox Game Pass. I would love to step into this game one more time but it's been 2 years I haven't touched the game so I will need to replay or start a fresh new load maybe so that I can understand how things work. There is one game that has taken gamers by storm and that is Among Us. A game that came out 2 years ago is now the most played games from literally out of nowhere. I mean how did that work out? The game came out 2 years ago and now it's popular? Anything can happen in lockdown huh? If you trust your friends, this game will definitely bring trust issues between you guys. The game will start out really great, you will enjoy and later down in the line, things change. Fights happen, you don't understand. But Among Us was supposed to have a sequel, Among Us 2, which is now being cancelled. They want to focus on this very game and whatever content they thought to add in Among Us 2 will be added in this game instead. With the popularity growing so high, it's becoming so hard for these devs to add something new to the game without breaking anything else because again, this game came out 2 years ago and nobody knew about it. Now it's a completely different story. <laughs> it's so popular that it has taken the crown away from Fall Guys. Can you believe it? <laughs> 
The game is really fun to play, although I haven't played the game, I have only watched it, I would love to play it, but if you don't own it on PC, you can always play it on mobile because it's free there. So bring your friends in and start playing Among Us, it's gonna be fun. One of the biggest news is that Konami actually just released some PC version of their classic games. The original Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear 2 Substance are all available on PC that you can buy from GOG.com and not only that, Konami collectors series such as Contra and Castlevania are also out for everyone to purchase. Now all of these games were already out on PC all the way back but now because of the current hardware that we have, now you can run these games again in those hardwares. Well, that is all we have to talk about in this episode of Top Gaming News. Hope you guys got some information and enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, you leave a dislike. And also comment down below what you think of this very episode. And do not forget to subscribe to Gamer Connect for more awesome content that comes out every single week. My name is Gamer Madness and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and happy gaming. And bye-bye.